All right, what up, y'all? PDT here. Let's get my stuff <laughs> out the way. Came on a few minutes early to let you know I was here because normally when I come on, if I'm late, you hear me say it all the time now, if I'm late, y'all think I'm not coming. <laughs> so that's not true. So, <clears throat> so uh, the enemy has totally been uh, uh, attacking my internet for like the last couple of weeks. Um, been having internet uh, struggles, but I'm well able to overcome. I'm going to overcome. But I uh, got some new internet even, and uh, it was freezing uh, while I was trying to broadcast and whatever, but that's all right. Because you still got to broadcast. You're going to make sure that the word of the Lord goes for whatever it takes. Okay? So, uh, let me put uh, title. Now, can you hear me? If you're on right now, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I'm going to put our title right on the screen. Okay. So I know there's a little bit of background noise, but you got to let me know if you can still hear me. Because you, you still should be able to hear me like that. All right. All right, checking my phone. Okay, good. Okay, so we're all good. All right, 2 30. So we're gonna say a word of prayer and jump on in. So, God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the word. Please speak to us today, oh God, and let your spirit flow freely so we can hear what you have to say. I surrender to you, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. And you speak to me and use my hands, my my heart uh, and everything I have to give Lord. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. I'm going to assume you can hear me because I'm not seeing anybody saying anything. Okay. All right. Today's alive. Okay. Somebody's liking the video, so you must be able to hear me okay. So, uh, okay. My son said yes, he can hear me okay. Great. Okay, so today's live prophetic word is liberty. Today's live prophetic word is liberty. So now, what does that mean? What does that mean in the context of what the Spirit of God is saying? Now, remember, whenever you get a live prophetic word, even when it has a scripture reference, the whole point of a live prophetic word is to ask the Lord, how does that apply to me? How does that apply to me? What does that mean to my life? Okay, and so... That's what we're going to be looking at because the word that the Holy Ghost gave me was liberty. But first, let's look at our reference scriptures and then we can go from there. All right. Our first re reference scripture is 2 Corinthians 3.17. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now, 2 Corinthians, both letters to the Corinthians were written by the Apostle Paul. And he was writing to the church at Corinth. That's why they're called Corinthians. They were very, very out of control people. Uh, they didn't have a lot of boundaries. They believed in a pantheon of gods. They followed a lot of the Greek system. So they would have, you know, a lot of orgies, a lot of drunken orgies. They were just really, really wild people. And uh, in that context, sometimes if somebody wanted to put you down, they would call you a Corinthian. So just so you get the context of who Paul was writing to. So these people got saved. These people got converted. These people uh, turned to the Lord from their previous lifestyle. And so they wrote Apostle Paul and asked him, how are we supposed to live now? Because now we know that all the stuff that we were doing before wasn't right. So how are we supposed to live? What are we supposed to do now, now that we're believers? Okay, just so you have some background and some context. So the scripture says that uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. Let me read that again. Now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 
Now, the first thing I want to focus on in that verse is the fact that the scripture says that the Lord is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is the Lord. <coughs> this is really a great mystery to people. Oh, Lord, my face is totally in the dark, isn't it? This is really a great uh, mystery to people because they don't understand a Trinitarian concept. They don't understand how such a thing can be. And the reason you struggle with it is because you try to fit it in your mind. You try to make it make sense to you. You try to say that if I can't understand it in my mind, that it can't be true. And that's not true. So none of us will understand the full mechanics of such a relationship. Nobody understands the full mechanics of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You can't explain how our God is trying in the nature, just like you can't explain how our God has no beginning and no end. That cannot fit in your mind. So I made peace with it a long time ago, and the Lord helped me to understand that you don't get to tell God how he has to be. Just because you can't conceive of something in your mind doesn't mean it's not true. Just because you can't conceive of something in your mind doesn't mean it can't exist. So the problem people have with that is they keep trying to bring God down to a human level. They keep trying to bring God down to what they can fit in their minds. And God is never going to fit in your mind. He's the creator, okay? He's beyond anything we could ever imagine. So the scripture says that the Lord is the spirit. Now, why is that significant? I'll tell you why that's significant. Because when the son of God became Jesus Christ, when God wrapped himself in human form and came through the womb of Mary and became a human like we are, when he did that, then he can only be in one place at one time. So the people that got to see Jesus live, the people that got to walk with Jesus is 12 and then it's three among his 12. And then all the people that were in Jerusalem and Galilee and Nazareth and Judea, they got to see the Lord live. He could only be in one place at a time when he's in human form. So because he did that, he made himself both God and man. But he knew that we wouldn't be able to function in this life without him. He knew when he understood that we were going to need his guidance, that we were going to need his help, that we were going to need uh everything that he still had to give us even though he wasn't here with us so what the lord did was he sent the holy ghost back okay let me say that one more time what the lord did was is he sent the holy ghost back now the spirit of god the third person of the trinity can actually be in all of us at the same time he can actually be with all of us at the same time he can actually connect us heart to heart at the same time. Have you ever met someone that you just met and you don't even really know them, but you feel a Holy Ghost connection? You feel an anointing, you feel a body, you feeling that there's something between you that you can't quite explain. That's because the spirit of the same spirit of God that's in me is the same Holy Ghost that's in you. So what the scripture is trying to tell us is that having the Holy Ghost with us is just like if the Lord was still walking the earth as a person. It's the same uh, effect, it's the same impact, except when the Lord walked the earth as a person, he can only be in one place at one time. And now that the Spirit of God is here, he's with all of us all the time, okay? So that's the first part where it says the Lord is the Spirit. But then it says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Now, what does that word mean coming out of the Greek? Coming out of the Greek, that word freedom means freedom, liberty, especially a state of freedom from slavery. Again, freedom, liberty, especially a state of freedom from slavery. Okay? So what does that mean in context? What that means is that many times the Lord has to deliver us. He has to bring us out. And, and if you walk with God, you will always have a testimony of God bringing you from, from something to something. Let me say that again. You always have a testimony of God bringing you from something to something. And this is why many people, unbelievers don't understand why they can't overcome certain stuff. But many times I've discovered that us as Christians, 
go through the same type of situation that we don't know why we are not overcoming certain things. And the reason that we're not overcoming certain things is because we're trying to do it in our own power. It's because we're trying to do it in our own strength. It's because we're not doing it through the spirit. And that's what I wanted to get to. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this message. And here it is. Excuse me. If you want to overcome, if you want to be free of bondage, let's look at some of the areas we can be in bondage. Well, you can be in bondage spiritually. That's called demonic oppression. Okay? Not spiritual warfare. That doesn't put you in bondage. You're in bondage where you can't function because some type of unclean spirit, something that's not from God, has a grip on you. Okay? What about mental bondage? Where you're having all kinds of bad thoughts, where your mind isn't clear, where you don't have any kind of peace. What about emotional bondage? Where you're not free to laugh, you're not free to love. And here's the biggest type of emotional bondage, when you're not free to be yourself. What do you do if you've lived your whole life and you've never felt free enough to be yourself? Then there's physical bondage, there's injury that's being made, there's infirmity, there's sickness, there's disease, uh, there's morbid obesity. Uh, anything that makes you a prisoner in your own body is bondage. What about social bondage? Social bondage is when you have the fear of man, but social bondage is also, how can I say it, uh, like cult-like stuff. What do I mean by that? I mean you're under the oppression of someone that's trying to control your life, that's trying to tell you what to do, that's trying to say you have to act, think, or behave a certain way. That social bondage, that's you being in jail to another human, because remember, they're just claying breath just like you, okay? But somehow they've got it in your head that you have to do what they say. There's uh, vocational bondage, or like what a lot of the people have been through this year, where you're either stuck on a job you don't want to be on, or you can't find work. And then finally, there's financial bondage. And financial bondage is when you're underneath the amount of debt, uh, you can't do what you want to do, you can't do what you've been called to do, and you can't break free financially. You don't have the money to live your dreams. You don't have the money to build your dreams, okay? And all, and you know, that's not a comprehensive list, but all those things are forms of bondage. So what the prophetic word today is that the reason you haven't been able to overcome, the reason you haven't been able to break through, the reason you haven't been able to get to where you want to get to is because you've been trying to fight in the natural. You've been trying to fight with your human hand. You've been trying to fight according to the strength of your own arm. That's why you haven't been winning. <laughs> That's why you haven't been able to overcome because you've been trying to fight based on what you could do. But the scripture says that where the spirit of the Lord is, see, the, see people have been interpreting that so many different ways. Uh, a lot of people said, you know, there's liberty in your spirit. So that means I can dress any kind of way I want to. And sometimes people do that just because they want to wear revealing clothes. So don't get me started on religious people. Uh, sometimes, sometimes people do that when they're talking about uh, dancing or they're talking about rejoicing or they're talking about the way they dance and rejoice. I'll never forget one time. Oh, I got a little light when I got close that way. Uh, I'll never forget one time I was at church. I'll never forget it. I was at, at church one time and we were worshiping. And there was this woman there that was worshiping God with dance. But the way she was doing it, it was really sensual. Okay, it was super sensual. I mean, it was super sensual and super sexual. And she had all kind of or us going on with her hips, and, and it really looked like she was making love to the air. And so sometimes, <laughs> I'm not making that up. So sometimes people, they do stuff like that. And then I was at another church one time with this really, really tall woman. The, uh, the music that was playing was heavy beat music. The, the beat was really, really heavy. And there was this tall woman in the front of church who was just kind of shaking to the music like she was at the club. 
Okay. So I've heard people all my life say, well, there's liberty in the spirit. And what, <laughs> and what they mean by that is because, you know, the Holy Ghost is there or the Lord is there because I'm saved or because my sins are forgiven and I can just do whatever I want. Okay, but what I'm trying to get you to see today, what I've been trying to get you to focus on today is that what, what the Holy Ghost showed me is that the reason that we have been struggling with some of these fights and some of these battles is because you have been trying to overcome in the natural. You've been trying to break out of bondage in the natural, and that's what the problem has been. That if you want to get out of bondage, if you want to overcome, you're going to have to do it by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, what does that mean in a practical sense, in a practical term? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you exactly what it means. In the Old Testament, when uh, the enemies of the children of Israel would come up against them, they would always either go to the prophet or go to the temple. When Solomon uh, completed the temple, they had a big temple dedication service. And one of the things that Solomon said in his prayer and one of the promises that God connected with them was that if they were to ever get in trouble, they could come to the temple of the Lord and ask of the Lord and the Lord would give them an answer to be able to defeat their enemies. Now, the Old Testament is what we call types and shadows. And what that means is that the Old Testament was not the full, complete picture of what God wanted his people to have. The Old Testament was kind of like kind of like uh, the framework, kind of like a sample, kind of like a foretaste, kind of like the outline, kind of like some of the basic ideas, but not the fullness. The fullness doesn't come until Jesus comes. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, then he was the full expression of God from heaven. And that's why the new covenant, that's why we only had to die one time. No more sacrifices of animals, no more sacrifices of bulls and goats and pigeons and turtle doves, because Jesus only had to die one time to reconnect us with Father God once and for all. But in the Old Testament, it's there to, to show us the principle, because the principles still apply or the Old Testament are new. And the principle in the Old Testament was that when you get in trouble, you can come to the prophet of God or you can come to the house of God and ask the Lord, how do I fight this fight? And that's the key. That's the key. Because this is a relationship. It's not a religion. Let me say that one more time. This is a relationship with a person. You hear me say it all the time, and I'm going to keep on saying it. Okay? God is a person, not a set of rules. And what people don't understand is they get religion, they get one principle, they get one scripture, they get one something, and then they try to use that in every situation from that point forward. And that's how so many people end up not winning their fights. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, let me put it this way. Let me give you an analogy. If you go to the doctor and you find that you have a vitamin or a mineral deficiency and the doctor tells you in that visit, that what you need is more iron, okay? So you get some more iron in your diet. Let's say five years from then, you have another problem, but instead of going back to the doctor and asking him to test you again, so you can figure out what it is that you need, you just take more iron because you think that taking that iron is gonna be the cure-all for everything that ails you from that point forward. That's not true. The iron is what you needed in that situation five years ago. Or if the doctor tells you to eat more, uh, eat more apples, because there's a lot of vitamins and minerals and there's pectin in the meat of the apple, there's minerals in the skin of the apple. You know, an apple is really a win-win proposition. If you like apples and you're not allergic to apples, there's really not a downside because apples are chock full of health. But let's say the doctor tells you at that point to eat more apples, and so you go to the grocery store and you load up apples. But five years from then, you're having another issue, and it turns out your issue is with potassium. 
okay? And there are higher sources of potassium like bananas, but you didn't go back to the doctor and get your blood work analyzed and find out what was up that second time. You just assumed because the apples worked the first time. Well, all I got to do is eat some more apples and I'll be fine. And during that second fight, apples is not what you needed. What you needed was more potassium, which you can get from bananas and other things. You see what I'm talking about? Okay, that's an exact analogy of what the Holy Ghost wanted me to release today, to say that the problem that we've been having as believers is you learned one or two scriptures when you first got saved, and you thought that them two, <laughs> you thought that them two that you learned in the beginning was going to be all that you needed for the rest of your life to fight every fight against the devil. That's not the truth. And that's what a lot of people end up doing is that they just learn in one or two scriptures and they never go back to the Lord and ask the Lord, how am I supposed to fight in this fight? What's the word for this fight? What is the Holy Ghost telling me for this fight? So what he wanted me to release today was the knowledge and the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom to let you know that those of you listening to me right now, um, I see some of y'all, I see some of y'all in a red and a white dress. It's almost Christmassy kind of striped. I see some of y'all outside like I am. I'm outside right now. I'm looking in the spirit right now. I see some of y'all very particularly are having problems with your mother. Some of you have, some of you have a sick mother, but some of you have a long running feud with your mother. You've been arguing with your mom over and over and over again for like decades. Uh, some of y'all, I see you have a problem on your scalp. Maybe your hair or your scalp. Maybe you're wearing a wig because you've got some type of skin, some type of psoriasis or alopecia, something going on with your scalp. Um, and some of you, I see some problems with your feet very specifically. You've got extraordinarily dry feet. You've got a skin rash that you're itching on. Now, how will I know all that? The Holy Ghost gives me stuff like that to help you believe. Because how would I know that? That's not me. That's, <clears throat> that's the Holy Ghost talking. <coughs> and that stuff is there to help you believe that the prophetic word is real okay so so the problem is is that you never went back to the temple you never went back to the lord you never asked again what's the word what's the scripture what's the fight what's the way i need to fight this fight and that's why you've been losing it's the exact same thing as going to the doctor one time and the doctor say, eat more apples. And for the rest of your life, you think that's going to cure you every time something's wrong. And you never go back and get a re-diagnosis to find out what's wrong this time. Because the second time, you need a potassium. Or you went one time and you got iron. And so you thought for the rest of your life, every time I had an issue, I just need to eat more iron. And you never went back and you never got re-diagnosed because you would have found out the second time, maybe he would have said, drink more water. And maybe he would have said, drink uh, filtered water, okay, or, or whatever. Because the first time, your problem was a lack of iron. But the second time, your problem was dehydration. <laughs> but you never went back to get an updated word. Can you see it? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. That's what I was supposed to release today to help you understand that. Remember, we talked about all the different forms of body, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, financial. And if you haven't been able to overcome, it's not because you can't overcome. It's because you've been either, number one, you've been trying to do it with your own hand based on what you think, based on your own effort, or number two, you never went back to the temple and asked the Lord, what is the diagnosis for this issue? And that is how you're going to get the freedom that you're looking for. That's how you're going to get the deliverance that you're looking for. Now, <clears throat> am I applying this in my own life? Yes, I am. <laughs> I found out very recently that there was some stuff I was fighting against. And long story short, I was just doing it wrong. 
okay, there were some things I was doing in the natural because I understand that this is not a genie concept. It's not magic. So in other words, you can't go to the Lord and say, oh, God, make me skinny. You can go to the Lord and you can ask for self-control. You can ask the Lord for help your body be more efficient. You can ask for dietary tricks to help your body burn fat. But you're going to have to do something with your diet and your exercise. That's called putting works behind your faith. So it's not magic. You understand that? And I understand that. I understand that very well. I understand that it's not a genie concept. We don't, you don't just rub the lamp and get the answer that you want. It doesn't work that way. But what I was doing was I was working so hard on putting some works behind my faith. I was working so hard in the natural. And I had to go to the Lord and I said, why am I here? Why am I struggling? And the Lord showed me because I was fighting the wrong fight. Because there was a spiritual component to what was happening. And there were some things that I needed to do in the spirit that I was not doing. And you know why I did that? Because I went and acquired of the Lord and he gave me the updated diagnosis. So I say that. Hey, what's up, Megan Henry? God bless you. Good to see you, Brother Henry. So I say that to let you know that, yes, I'm applying this stuff in my own life. I'm not just making it up. I'm not just pulling it out of thin air. And yes, it's very, 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 very real. You understand? And so that's why some of us have been losing the fight because we didn't go back and get the proper diagnosis from the Lord and ask the Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, hey, there's my sister. And we didn't ask the Lord, what am I, what am I supposed to be doing in this fight? Do you get it? Okay. And so that's the key. That's the prophetic word for today. That if you want to get to the freedom, the financial freedom or the relationship freedom, and that's another one, then that's something we can all relate to. What do you do if you're having relationship struggles? What you have to do is you have to go to the Lord and ask the Lord, what should I do? Because you know, sometimes the Lord might tell you to close your mouth. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, that's normally the last one we want to hear. Because normally when you're upset with somebody, you either want to talk or you want them to talk or you just want them to listen or you just want to give them a piece of your mind. You just want to tell them, blah, 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 blah. And sometimes you might go to the Lord, and the Lord said, what you need to do is shut your mouth. And that may not be what you want to hear, but that's the right way to win that fight, okay? Because we spend too much of our lives trying to control people. We spend too much of our lives trying to change people. We spend too much of our lives trying to make people be who we want them to be. You can't make people be who you want them to be. You can't control people to tell other people what they have to choose, how they're supposed to think and feel, okay? The only person you can control is you. The only person you can change is you, okay? And so sometimes when you're dealing with your relationship stuff, you fight the wrong fight. You fight a control fight, you're not gonna win that. You fight that I'm trying to break the wheel fight, you're not gonna win that. You fighting a, I'm trying to, I'm trying to change. I'm trying to change that other person. You're not gonna win that. Okay. If you want to win, if you want to win, you got to get the proper diagnosis from the one that invented people and say, how do I fight this fight? Sometimes do you know that the right answer is prayer and silence? Sometimes if you have had a broken relationship with someone. Sometimes there's nothing that you can say because they're not going to forgive you on their own. They're not going to let it go on their own. They're not going to whatever. They're not going to do that on their own. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to turn it over to the Lord and let it go and pray. Okay. And sometimes fast and let the Lord work it out. Let the Lord touch their heart. Okay. Sometimes that's what you have to do. You understand? But the point, again, the point, that's just an example. The point of today is to understand that the reason you have been losing, the reason that you have been in bondage, the reason that you haven't been able to break free is because you did not go back to the Lord and ask him through the spirit, what is the word for this fight? What is the tool for this fight? What is it that I have to do to win 
And like I said, I did that example for my personal life because I applied it in my personal life and I saw some changes, but I'm still pushing because I still need more changes, but I'm still pushing. I'll give an example. Why do you think uh, I've been having this struggle with the internet? I've been fighting over my internet stuff for like over a month. Why do you think that's been? Because the word of the Lord is coming forth and the devil's trying to stop it. I know that. I'm going to win. I'm going to win because I'm doing what the Lord said to Because I went to the Lord and I asked him, what should I do? And don't you remember that? That about two or three weeks ago, I preached, uh, I mean, I prophesied and I taught a, uh, a message on looking crazy about how sometimes when you follow the Lord, you're going to look crazy. People don't think you're crazy. Remember that? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And it's going to look crazy to the people around you, but sometimes you got to do it. You see that? And so that's what I mean when I say it all depends on what the Lord is telling you to do for that situation. So just like you go to the medical doctor to get the right diagnosis for the medicine, and just like you go to the nutritionist to get the right food for the ailment, you got to go to the Lord to get the right scripture for the fight that you're having. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to win this internet fight. Okay. Uh, because through Jesus Christ, I am well able to overcome whatever giant. Because I found out that there were some giants I was fighting. And, and, and like I knew about the information, but somebody else brought it to me. Because I hadn't even thought about it. I hadn't even thought about it. And then he brought it to me. As soon as they brought it to me, I said, that's it. That's it exactly. And because there were some giants I was fighting as I continue to move forward and take the promised land that God has promised me. But I, I said, like Joshua and Caleb, I am well able to overcome through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to win. The victory's already been won, but I got to fight the way the Lord is telling me to fight so I can get the victory in my hand. Does that make sense? All right. So I hope that's been a blessing to you. It's certainly been a blessing to me. And like I said, I'm applying it in my life. I'm not just making this stuff up. That's why I tell you all the time, the stuff that I'm released prophetically, whatever the Holy Ghost is telling you, he's talking to me too, and I'm applying it in my life. Okay? All right. So let me see if there's anything else uh, I need to release before we go. Uh, when you see me, um, when you see me close my eyes, when you see me praying in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is there anything else you want me to say? So hold on. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. And hold on. Okay. Okay, the Lord just told me that some of y'all have been struggling with your phone. The Lord said you're going to get a new phone this week. <laughs> I don't know who that's for, but whoever that's for, God bless you. Some of y'all looking at me or looking at me live, or that might be looking at me, that might be watching the replay, the Lord said, you've been struggling with your phone. You're going to get a new phone this week. God's going to bless you. All right? Let me check and be sure. Let me see if there's anything else. Okay, so some of y'all say, Prophet Taylor, how do you know all that? I know all that by the Holy Ghost. That's not me. That's the spirit of God in me. That's the whole point of the Holy Ghost being here because he's everywhere at once. And he knows everything. He knows the hearts of people. He knows where all the money is. He knows where all the people are that you want to marry. He knows uh, He knows what's going to happen. He knows the future. He knows your past. Okay, uh, Brother Henry, you said, please pray for my family. Be specific. What do you want prayer for your family for? Tell me specifically what you want me to uh, pray for your family for. Gonna type that. Uh, what is the specific prayer for your family? Okay, and the reason the reason that's important is because you always need to target your prayer. Okay, you need to target your offerings and your giving. You need to target your confession, the things that you say, 
but you need to target your prayers. Don't just say stuff like, you know, God bless my family, bless them high. You know, be specific, okay? Because just like when you're shooting, if you're an archer, if you're shooting an arrow, if you aim at nothing, you hit it. You have to aim at a target. And that's how you hit it. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so yeah, brother, you tell me that specific prayer because I want to pray something. I want to pray specifically for whatever it is that you need because we need to target our prayers. Okay. For salvation and financial prayer. Yeah, there we go. See now, that's how you make a prayer request. That's, you be very specific. So let's do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Brother Henry, oh God. We pray for his family. Number one, oh God, that you would save them, that you would bring salvation to that family, that you would open their eyes to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the truth of your precious Holy Spirit, the truth of your love and your grace, oh God, that can make them born again, that can open up their hearts, oh God, and let them see you and let them know your love and let them know that they are loved and they're not alone in this world when we have you in our lives. Number one, number two, oh God, we pray for financial breakthrough, that whatever the hindrance has been, whatever giants they fought, that you would give them the wisdom, that you would give them the faith, that you would give them the know-how to get financially to where they need to be, to get the breakthrough, to get the financial flow in their life that, that they need. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. That's how you make a prayer request, amen. So I declare and decree signs and wonders and miracles, and also for Sister Henry, okay, uh, for Sister, for uh, his wife, uh, salvation for her and financial breakthrough for her. Now, Brother Henry, there's going to be signs and wonders and miracles that follow that prayer and that prophetic word if you believe it. So what you need to do now is you need to speak it in your home. What you just asked God for, when we pray according to his will, he hears us and we get it as soon as we pray in the spirit, but we want it to manifest out here. So what you have to do now, Brother Henry, is speak salvation over your family. You have to say it, okay? And you have to say it every day. And you have to speak financial breakthrough over your family. You have to say it every day because the enemy doesn't just lay down. He will get knocked down and he will get moved out the way. And you can't, you can't kill the giants like David killed Goliath, but you still got to throw the stone. <laughs> you still got to fight. Okay. And so what you have to do now, Brother Henry, we, we prayed it. We believe God when we pray. We know that salvation to find them financial breakthrough according to his will, but now you got to say it. you got to confess it, and you got to confess it every day. That as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That salvation has come to this house. That financial breakthrough has come to this house. Wealth and riches are in my house because of the word of God. That's your part of the fight right now, Brother Henry. All right? All right. Anybody else have any other prayer requests? Remember, you can always put the prayer requests on the screen, and I'll pray for you on the spot because I'm not one of those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the list and pray for you later, people. No, no, I'll pray for you on the spot. So if you want me to pray for you, put it out there now. I'll pray for you right now on the spot. We get an answer right now, and then God will tell us what it is that we're supposed to do because you ain't got to be waiting no two and three days and no four and five weeks and no two and three years for no deliverance. I speak to, that's why, brother Henry, that's why I speak salvation on my family, Jesus knows. That's why you got to say that every day. But let me say that one more time. You ain't got to be waiting no two or three days. You ain't got to be waiting no four or five weeks. You ain't got to be waiting no two or three years. How do we know that's true? Because Jesus did. When the man came to, to Jesus and asked him to heal his daughter, his daughter got better from that very hour. Remember, when the Lord cursed the fig tree within 24 hours, it dried up. Remember, Lazarus had been dead four days. And he said, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus got up. Remember? You ain't got to be waiting no two or three weeks and no four or five months and no two and three years, but you do got to fight. And you do have to believe, and you got to be sure that you are fighting with the right tools, and you got to be sure that you're doing what the Lord said to you so you can win the fight. Okay? Okay, if anybody else has um, any other prayer requests, put them up on the screen. Okay. All right. So no more prayer requests. That's it for this weekly live prophetic word. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Um, and uh, I will be back my regular time next week, one way or the other. I tried to do it on my phone and my phone kept freezing. 
So uh, I was like, oh, I was like, that's all right. I'll come outside <laughs> because the word of the Lord is going to come forth. So one way or another, I'll be here next week at my same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, please like and share this video in, in as many places as you can, because whenever the Lord releases a prophetic word and a prophetic teaching, we want as many people as possible to see it so they can get the blessing for, for what the Holy Ghost is trying to say. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. God bless. Um, if you want to bless me uh, financially, you can send uh, a contribution to my Zelle uh, and use Zelle and send it to a prophet, David Taylor at gmail.com. If you want to, I don't do what I do for money. I do what I do because the Lord called me to. God bless you, Brother Henry. God bless you. Amen. Amen. But uh, if you want to sow into my ministry, uh, then do it through my Zelle. Uh, let me put my Zelle on the screen. Okay, because I have found that Zelle is actually one of the better uh, apps. And so so I'm going to run everything through that from now on. So definitely send it through my Zelle. Okay. All right. Um, you can also uh, send it to my personal email address. I put my personal email address up with you. All right. Amen and God bless. I will be here the same time next week, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, one way or the other. <laughs> Even if I got to come back outside, <laughs> I will be sure that the word of the Lord uh, comes for it. Okay? All right, amen, amen, and God bless. And remember, remember where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We're supposed to be free. We're not supposed to be bound. But we got to get the specific word from the Lord on how to fight that fight so we can win. Amen. God bless. I'll see you next week.